black audience of the 70s was indeed a politically conscious audience. But too often going to those movies, you were encouraged to simply forget the politics and indulge the pleasure of the sex, the clothes, the cars, the drugs. It was where the reaction against black exploitation started to really pick up. The Hollywood Beverly Hills branch of the NAACP pretty much rigorously denouncing Superfly. Jesse Jackson, a number of people coming out and saying, hey, All right, turn around. I don't know if this is exactly the direction we want to go in. Now, if you see Jim Brown on television, if you see Carl Stokes on television, you can rather safely assume that they are not going to suffer any indignities on the television. They feel a little freer all right, all right. and maybe feel a little more powerful, They're there, but they are not actually any more powerful because they have not turned the groove into an organism. There were a number of people that uh, reacted to the film, and we can start to see then the seeds of a, a kind of a critical dialectical reversal. Superfly is made by black people. In the black ghetto, like it is, and taken out to the moneyed, affluent people. We have to be very thoughtful of what we do and say on film. And the stereotypes that we have are often what we perpetuated ourselves. I broke them, but I also created some. Because everyone thought a, a black woman is a whoop your butt sister all the time. Says, no, that's not true. You know, we create a lot of that mess ourselves. When Foxy Brown comes to town, all the brothers gather round. Because she can really shake them down. Foxy lady, Foxy lady. I thought it was like doing Gone with the Wind. I was going for the Oscar. <laughs> you, know? you tell me who you want done, and I'll do the hell out of it. A chick with drive who don't take no jive. That's how I approached everything in my life, is just be the best. Have no fear, Pam Greer is here. Pam Greer to me was like a superhero. I mean, look at the body on this woman. I mean, with the film Coffee, Sheba Baby, um, uh, Foxy Brown, you know. She was basically a superhero. Almost like the ultimate girl. You didn't quite want a girl that was that tough, but you did want a girl that was, you know, that tall, had a big fro. You didn't want your girlfriend to actually be able to kick your ass. All right, baby, everybody out. You say she'll do anything? <laughs> That's what she said, man. Hey, she's up. Coffee was my mom. Foxy Brown was my aunt. And they were women who were very demonstrative, but yet very feminine, and know how to use sexuality. Hey, big man. Why don't you turn out the lights? This is the end of your rotten life, you motherfucking dope pusher! Women of the 70s had to do a lot of things because of the wars. They had to do a lot of things that men had, you know, were supposed to do. And if you didn't have a man at home, you did it. So I also brought that into the film. Um, Coffee, Foxy Brown, and Sheba were independent women that did things because there wasn't a man around. My name's Coffin. LaBelle Coffin is my little sister. LaBelle? Her whole life is gone. She can never get it back. And you're living real good. That ain't right. It ain't right. The gonna take the shot. I can't. That'll kill me. Maybe it will and maybe it won't. But if it do, you're gonna fly through them pearly gates with the biggest fucking smile St. Peter ever seen. No, no. I don't even remember your little sister. The level of violence was pretty great in those films. Oh, even in coffee and all that stuff where she had razor blades stuck in her hair, man, women grabbed by the hair and they go, oh. 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 Oh.
Dunham. Got to have that girl, George. Tonight. I thought it was the the moment where we could really live out the freedoms won by the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s political gains. Where we could, I could come out here and go to Beverly Hills and the doors are open for me to go to nightclubs and restaurants and be treated very equal. When I remember, you know, um, walking with my mom in the South, my little brother, we would go shopping to bring food and, and things back home and the buses, city buses, wouldn't stop to pick us up because we were black. 110 in the shade, humidity, bugs, and they'd go right by us. It could be up to 10 miles. It's like walking from here to downtown, you know, um, L.A. Um, so from knowing what that was and to be able to really experience a freedom, one in the 70s, was, was very different. What is it you really want? Justice. For whom, your brother? Why not? It could be your brother, too, or your sister, or your children. I want justice for all of them. And I want justice for all the other people whose lives are bought and sold so that a few big shots can climb up on their backs and laugh at the law. Sister, I think what you're asking for is revenge. Also, the this, this sexual movement was raging through the streets. Shorts were getting, you know, skirts were getting shorter. Men's pants were getting tighter. Uh, people were throwing underwear and bra out the window, you know, type of thing. We had Woodstock, you love your body, naked, peace, and love. Um, so all of that was about who we were, too. And you could see that in the film. By 1975, the industry was rocking. Then other actresses said, you know, I think I'm going to kick some butt, too, and make some money like Pam. So there were a few other actresses entering, from T Tamara Dobson <laughs> to Gloria Hendry. Do those dishes or something. They're done. It was just exploding. George, 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 he's a pimp, he's a pusher, yeah. Black exploitation films brought to the screen for the first time, in many ways, working class and poor black people's obsessions with style. Like a goddamn pajama party. Hey, look, I want you to meet somebody. This here is, uh, Mystique. What people really remember, basically, is like the clothes that the pimps wore and the hustlers. You know, that was the stuff that, that really stood out. It was self-expression. They wanted to be out there. They wanted to shine. Put the light on me. You know, flamboyance, peacock. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Players' Showcase. And he likes to stay at the place you sure have got it together this evening. I can remember, you know, going to see the Mac, and um, everybody wanted to be Goldie. You know, he had this white monkey fur coat on. It's like everybody emulated this. Very good, Slim. Yeah, Y'all have a beautiful yeah. night. We'll see you on there. This was the uh, shift from the uh, self-sacrificing we generation of the civil rights movement and its aftermath and the me consumer generation that was starting to rise. Energy that uh, up until about 72, 73 was very militant starts to get displaced into sartorial display, fashion, coiffure. The afro was out. Guys that were wearing berets and black leather jackets suddenly started showing up with uh, big gold chains with coke spoons on them and crushed velvet with uh, big floppy hats. <laughs> it was bad, but in some instances, it was, you know, it was fun. Um, I mean, it was fashion. You wanted to be like these people that you saw on the screen, and that's where some people say a lot of the negativity came from. 
I told you before, okay? You got your game and I got mine, okay?